All right, welcome. My name is Corey Gibson. I am a customer success manager, and I am here to help explain Azure Cloud Slice and how making Azure resources can become easy and customizable for your users. So the basics of Cloud Slice are that you can use Cloud Slice whenever needed within your organization. There's no virtual machine profile needed, but you can use one if you'd like for a hybrid lab. I'll show you that later. You do need a valid Azure subscription, and there is some prep work that needs to be done in Azure and Lab On Demand to make all this come together and set your cloud subscription pool and your subscription or subscriptions. We have a couple different types of Cloud Slice, so I'm going to go over each one. Also remember that I'm focusing on Azure, but AWS has Cloud Slice as well. It's not broken down the same way. I'll go over that a little bit later just to kind of wrap up, but I'll teach the principles via Azure. So the first way, the first Cloud Slice we offer is Cloud Slice, Slice subscription. This is not common. This is very rare. It requires a special Azure account, but it does allow global admin per permissions within Azure. So users can do things like create resource groups. Our default Cloud Slice is what's called a CSR, a Cloud Slice resource group. This does almost everything that you could do in a CSS, but it limits the user within the resource group. So they couldn't, say, create another resource group or do other global admin level permissions. So this just helps secure everything. Speaking of security, in all Cloud Slice scenar scenarios, security is number one. So Cloud slicing does a couple of things. It limits and controls costs, so you don't have those runaway resources. In, so the student doesn't just launch a lab, create whatever they want, and then you have this runaway resource. And along with cost, it locks resources to mitigate misuse. So with every cloud, cloud sliced lab, you'll have to provide an access control policy. You cannot launch a lab that has any cloud resource attached to it or cloud subscription attached to it without an access control policy. Access control policies are where we mitigate that misuse or uh, and or keep those costs down and keep the user confined into the resource environment that you want. For example, you want to run an Azure lab with one VM and a storage container and maybe a SQL server. The access control policy locks that user into just those three resources. And then it also gives you the ability with resource templates to decide, do I want to let that user through instruction or not build those resources themselves? Or do I want to set a resource template that will provision all this stuff for the user by the time they come into the lab and they're locked down so they can't like make another VM or make their own resource groups with their own SQL servers or go way off the reservation and do something like an AI bot or a Kubernetes cluster. ACPs are the thing that will help frame your environment and guide your users. So let's look at what some of this stuff may appear like. This is going to be an AWS just to show you that AWS is possible and sliceable. I've set this AWS subscription to just launch one really quick bucket. And you can see here it gives the account, the username, and of course the bucket. So very simple, very quick to set up, and very locked down. If I were to try to create something else, I wouldn't be able to. So let's end that lab and let's look at how that's created. 
So as you've seen on your site administration page, you've got the Create Lab Profile. From here, you would create your profile. We're going to go ahead and go into this hybrid VM that I've already created. So you've seen what the launch into a portal looks like, like a web UI without a virtual machine, so a non-virtualized. This is what it looks like with a VM hybrid environment. The virtual machine is up and running, so let's say I needed VS Code or, or a SQL Server Manager, I could run that in this VM and use this VM as sort of a jump box to my web portal, and I can just open that URL and log into my Azure portal. And I can use my handy dandy type text. Never save. And I did not set this to create anything for me, so I've got all the access in the world to create up to a storage account and a VM on this subscription. It's very handy, it's very uh, useful. Again, if I didn't need the VM, I could just set this to launch straight into the web portal. Please don't forget that um, when you are setting this up, you do need some back-end scripting to be done between uh, your subscription and LOD. It's very quick, very nice process. We've got it very streamlined. I also want you to notice here, see I have this security review required. This is just to show you that when you make a lab, before it can be consumed, you have to have a security review done. And you do that just by clicking this button. This will trigger uh, our security review team to get a ticket that says, hey, you got to review this, this uh, access control policy. And we'll go in here and we'll just talk briefly over the cloud tab. Now, this one, because it has a virtual machine, you'll see these other tabs. If it didn't, these tabs would not be here and you would just see this one. But uh, you're going to choose your cloud platform, Azure AWS. You're going to choose your subscription pool that you've already set up. So this is the back end work that you would have to have. So you take your Azure subscription and uh, you give it to us and we slice it up for you and get your subscription set up. You tell us how many subscriptions you want per pool and we do all the rest for you. You set your data center availability, your user accounts, and in this case, because it's a Cloud Slice resource group, you would set your resource groups. And you can set a resource template if you want and your access control policy. And as you can see here, this one's actually set unrestricted for development. So what you can do is you can put an unrestricted there. You can create all of your resources and then you can determine what you need exactly in your control policy through your resource group manager in Azure and you can set up your control policy that way. I'll give you a quick peek under the hood of this guy over here. So this is if you were to use a, a, um, a Cloud Slice without um, an Azure or without a virtual machine hybrid. This is just launching you straight into the AWS portal. Notice that it just has that cloud tab with the life cycles and whatnot. And here again, choose your cloud platform, your subscription pool, and your data center availabilities. And then here you would put your resource template for your stack deployment and your control policy as well. This one's limited to allow one S3 bucket and provision that bucket for you. That is all I have today. Please remember to look at our help docs to give you more information on Cloud Slice. And also please remember you always have your AEs, AMs, and support staff at your disposal. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you learned something about Cloud Slice, and we'll see you next time.